Good day. This is William Garvey, Editor-in-Chief of Business and Commercial Aviation Magazine. Today we're speaking with Chad Cundiff, an aeronautical engineer and air transport pilot who heads Astronautics Corporation, a 60-year-old avionics maker serving military, commercial, and business aviation, along with rotary wing operations. Astronautics Corporation is not a small avionics company. You've got something like 1,400 employees, and you own Kirfot, which is an important electronics and systems supplier, particularly, I think, to the military. And yet the name Astronautics is unfamiliar to many business aviation operators. Why is that? Well, I think Astronautics is a little bit unfamiliar to business aviation operators because we've been primarily serving the helicopter and the military and the air transport markets. So we've had some products on business aviation aircraft for a number of years. You know, we've done flap control systems and other subsystems. Most of the stuff that we put on business jets has actually gone through other Tier 1 providers. There's a fair chance that uh, people have been operating astronautics products and don't even know it. And it's interesting, too, because you get a number of business aviation operators, you know, pilots, for instance, that came out of the military. And, and of course, they know our products from their days, you know, flying in F-16s or other military aircraft. So it's, it's not that we're an unknown, but I think if you've been a pure business aviation flyer, maybe came up to the general aviation ranks, then you may not be as familiar with astronautics. You and I spoke at the recent Heli Expo in Atlanta, and I know that the rotary wing aviation, as you've just said, is an important market, and you serve it with several product lines. That segment of aviation has had its challenges. How do you see rotary aviation's near and long, and I'm talking about obviously civilian rotary aviation, near and long-term future? I think when we look at rotary aviation, I mean, there's a variety of uh platforms and uses for the products out there. And so if you think about it, I mean, obviously a lot of emergency medical, transport, law enforcement, patrol. Now, obviously oil prices and and some of the specific operations that were related to you know, oil exploration or, or out to crew transport for some of the platforms. You know, some of that's been down in recent times. But if you look at that market, I mean, it just the power of being able to go over vertically you know, through urban areas or, or be able to do things from a vertical takeoff and landing standpoint that you can't do the fixed-wing aircraft that needs a paved strip in order to operate gives you a lot of capability. And I think what you're seeing right now is, is sort of a reinvigoration in that market with a number of these folks looking at urban lift, uh, with you got a number of new technologies coming to bear, more electric. Uh, and so we're very excited about the marketplace. We've uh, We've invested heavily in products uh, for rotary wing and vertical lift aircraft, and we just see a lot of opportunity. And, you know, the other thing I think that makes this market very attractive to us is, you know, we're a company that's very comfortable tailoring our products, you know, to specific missions. And so we put in a lot of special capability, you know, whether it's video input, you know, those type of things that, that allow you to do special mission things. And so you know, which goes right to the heart of this market and and to the different applications that people use these platforms for. Uh, We like to do those sorts of things. So for us, I think it's a very exciting time. We see the market picking up from the traditional rotary wing, and we see new technologies with vertical lift driving uh, substantial growth going forward. Interesting. So astronautics is going to be a player in what they're calling the urban air mobility market? Definitely. We want to be a player in, in all things sort of vertical lift. And urban air mobility, as well as the more traditional rotary wing. FAA hired astronautics to assess its system's vulnerability to cyber hacking. How concerned should operators be about that threat? To be clear, we're not assessing the FAA systems. What we're assessing is, is avionics vulnerability to cyber hacking. And not only assessing the vulnerability, but really more assessing, you know, how do we in essence, how do you do these, those types of assessments, and then how do you protect against it, and, and, and what sort of standards should be in place? And, and so we've been a happy partner to, to work with the FAA and, and other CERT authorities to, to really develop some methodology and assessment capability, if you will. In terms of, you know, how concerned people should be you know, in regards to cyber, look, I mean, at this day and age, you know, so much information gets transmitted and put out there. And so when you think about cyber vulnerability, you know, I encourage people to think not just about, you know, sort of these uh, sci-fi sort of considerations where you got a guy on the ground with a remote joystick and he's flying under bridges you know, or something like that. I mean, that, that's obviously, 
you know, sort of one set of concerns, but there's also concerns about, you know, what about the information coming off the aircraft? What about personal information on who's down the aircraft? Or, or you know, maybe you're trying to conduct business on the aircraft, and, and what information is flowing off, and how can that be intercepted? Uh, and, and obviously, I, I think any business aviation operator is, is aware of, uh, you know, some of the concerns about just knowing where their aircraft's going and maybe that alerting the people about certain deals that may be taking place or things like that. And so, you know, there's different levels of vulnerability, and I think any business aviation operator needs to go in and, and take a look at, you know, what information is going to and from that aircraft, what does that mean, and if that could be hacked, I mean, what's the concern that they have about that? And, and then they need to start putting in place some sort of protection plan for that information. Going back to the core avionics, I think there's a lot of things going on right now to make sure that those core avionics are well protected and to protect against that scenario where somebody can remotely grab control of an aircraft. That wouldn't be my biggest concern, I guess, for a number of the operators out there today. But I think information on and off aircraft, I mean, I think that's something an operator's got to look at, particularly as operators try and adapt more and more connectivity solutions to get more information on and off the aircraft. And that is... A major movement right now in in technology. I mean, the passengers on business jets want that connectivity and that interactivity, too. We're offering a number of connectivity solutions, you know, into helicopters and and into, you know, jets and other uh, transport aircraft, and, and we've got a number of solutions in development. And we spend a lot of time looking at the cyber capabilities of our systems. And so I think people have to get smart about asking how they're going to use that system, you know, what kind of information they want to flow off and how is that protected? How do you offboard it? Um, we have solutions that protect that information getting off the aircraft. We have solutions that, that separate domains for the different uses so that information is protected, you know, from different types of hacking. So, so within the solutions that you can buy, I mean, you know, there's some very low-cost solutions out there, and, and, and I'd caution people that sometimes, you know, in some of these connectivity solutions, you get what you pay for to some extent. So some of these are single-thread, easily hacked, sending information off in a very open way that's easy to be intercepted versus, I think, you know, the solutions we would provide, like what we're doing with Airbus Helicopter, uh, which is a much more protected solution. I know you have a number of display products in development. Can you tell us a little bit about them? So I think on the display side of our business, uh, we've got three major product lines that we've been investing in and developing. The first is our Badger integrated cockpit system, uh, which is on you know Plotus trainers as, as well as other aircraft, and it's been available for forward fit and retrofit, and integrates the entire information from an aircraft to, in essence, a, a cockpit system that, that pilots can interact with. As well, we've got now our Roadrunner retrofit solution for rotorcraft, getting SDC on that even as we speak, and, and that's going to, I think, provide a fantastic upgrade for, especially for rotorcraft operators, but for fixed-wing operators as well. And the benefit there is it gives you the EFIS presentation, it gives you things like upgrades to HTAS and SVS, and provides an enhancement, I think, to the pilot situational awareness. And we're super excited about that for the rotorcraft because it's designed for rotorcraft. Roadrunner is designed from day one. To, to live in that helicopter environment. And then we've got the IBEX family of displays that we announced at Heli Expo. And, of course, you know, if none of those really fit the bill for you, you know, we're very happy. We've got several programs underway right now. We're doing custom solutions for specific customers that draw on the technology from those product lines. We've been speaking with Chad Kunduf, president of Astronautics Corporation. This is William Garvey, editor of Business and Commercial Aviation Magazine. Thank you for your time and your interest.